We've got uh, the top question is what is the timeline for the new protocol looking like? So right now we are probably looking at three months out is what I would say for a, a V0 of the protocol. And uh, we've already started work on it and I think that's all I'll say for now. Um, but yeah, so three, three months is uh, what our expectations are right now. If things change as new information becomes available, then I'll likely just post in Discord an update on exactly what, um, you know, what uh, the update is. So, okay, just, just before I really hop into it, I guess let's start with kind of a, an update on, um, you know, the last six months. So six months ago was when I did the last AMA with Mick and we have had uh, lots of progress within the community, within mainframe as a team and uh, in development of our protocol. It seems like uh, every one really liked the white paper. We got a lot of great feedback on our promotional video, trying to explain our concepts very concisely and clearly. But if, if I were to look back in the last six months and say where we've made the most progress, it hands down would have to be with our community. So we recently announced that there's a guardian program and essentially we have certain of our most enthusiastic members of the community who are helping to moderate our new Discord server. Uh, this I think helps give a lot more ownership to the community and what types of content they want to see in the chat and puts a lot less burden on um, myself personally and others who uh, really try to wrangle the community during uh, certain times. And so uh, we're hoping that uh, this will continue to grow as a program, uh, allowing members of the community to have a lot more say in how the community is managed. And the, the other thing that I've been most impressed with is the level of toxicity within the community is at an all time low. I think when I came in, a lot of uh, people really needed to feel heard. And I've really taken the time. If you've commented or asked a question directly in uh, previously Telegram, but now where we're at in Discord, then you got a direct response from me. And uh, I know that that won't last forever. Um, I my, my bandwidth is already waning, but uh, I'll continue to try and check in and give attention to uh, make sure everybody, you know, who wants a voice can have a voice within the community. So thank you to everybody, especially our guardians. And, uh, and, and this, was, this was really not an original idea. I think you're going to start to see very clearly that, you know, so when I look at my job as CEO, what what am I supposed to do for mainframe? And, and I distill it down to, it's my job to sell confidence. And so by, by following in the paths of other people who have already proven certain, um, certain programs to work, uh, it, it makes it very easy for us to just adapt it, copy and paste into our, uh, whether it's token economics or community program, uh, so I really got to hand it to uh, Synthetics, uh, formerly Haven. Uh, we are following their playbook. You know, they uh, at one point uh, they were a stablecoin project that were that was going to launch on the EOS network and uh, have you know totally pivoted, uh, rebuilt their community and transformed it into uh, you know one of the uh, DeFi leaders in the entire DeFi space. And so you're going to see a lot of um, a, a lot of patterning after SNX. In fact, I, as I talk to our investors and I talk to the board, uh, this is exactly what I'm telling them is that we're following the synthetics playbook here. And so you'll see in my blog post about the Guardians program that it comes straight out of their playbook. Uh, I, I linked directly to the um, to the announcement when they 
uh, transitioned from Telegram to Discord and implemented their Guardian program. And, uh, and so if that's something that interests you to want to have a little bit more responsibility within the community, um, I'm, I, uh, I'm open to expanding that group, but specifically it is the Guardian group who will be the judges who add more or keep it uh, a smaller uh, subset of the community. Uh, but we'll, we'll be adding perks to the program and uh, not really interested in getting into that right now, but uh, there are definitely perks for helping mainframe as we rebuild and uh, pivot into DeFi. So when I look at um, the last, you know, mainframe has been a cryptocurrency focused company, you know, blockchain focused company for the last two years. Our history is, uh, is one that uh, I'm, I'm actually really proud of. We uh, had a very successful, um, you know, pre-sell of our token. Uh, we we then turn around and deliver two products, and we learned a lot along the way uh, in terms of what the what the space has room for right now, and what the uh, what the appetite of consumers are. And, and one thing that was reiterated in both of our previous failures, and the, the, you know they, they were failures because we didn't get any traction to justify the continual reinvestment of our resources, you know, to those projects. But one thing that, uh, that we've really learned from that is that people need something that's very easy to understand and they're not willing to make very many trade-offs from the types of tools that they're already using today. And so when we introduced chat and it required people to manage their private keys, uh, it, you know, people just looked at it and thought, well, why don't I just use Slack? And and the, the use case around decentralization uh, wasn't strong enough to, you know, build a, a strong product around. So a lot of people popping back up into the community are asking questions around, well, what happened? Well, what happened was that we we try and listen. And we're uh, really committed to uh, finding product market fit. And when we look at where the utility is within the space, uh, decentralized finance has the strongest utility uh, that we can see. So we're joining uh, DeFi. We're going to be relaunching our brand into the DeFi space and uh, really establishing ourselves as somebody who can be trusted and uh, where you're going to want to park your funds. So we recently uh, released the white paper. Um, I, I'm judging by uh, the kind of excitement and clamor around that. Uh, that people are really happy with this direction. We'll continue, you know, we had our guardians review that white paper document before we published it. And, uh, you know, really got to hand it to our um, team and uh, community for providing feedback uh, before we did this initial publish. Now, a bit behind, like if we peel back the curtains just a little bit, I was really tempted to, kind of put a public rough draft out there. Uh, and, and I'm really glad I did not because I think it makes a real strong splash for our marketing and people, you know, they only give you one chance. They're going to come and they're going to look and then they're going to make a judgment on whether or not they want to be a part of us or not. And, and so I think I will continue with that precedence, meaning that uh, I'm willing to wait until development marketing and the business end of things are all ready before making releases. And so, um, you know, we had a kind of a private uh, peek at the um, white paper. And so I imagine as we look at uh, putting something actually on chain, that it will follow a similar pattern. We'll wait until the marketing is ready. We'll wait until the business is ready. And we'll start with a small group of trusted individuals to help us vet out any early bugs or UX kinks. Um, and so that, that's what I think you can expect in terms of my leadership and uh, leading this out. So I, I, th I don't think I've burnt my reputation yet. I think uh, we, you know, everyone in the community for the most part is uh, trusting me. And, uh, and so I think if I'm gonna grade mainframe on uh, where we are in terms of, uh, you know, community, I think we're as healthy as we've ever been. Uh, in terms of resources and runway, 
Uh, we have more runway today than we had when I started, and in large part due to our uh, you know MFT war chest that we hold, and uh, and then in in terms of a team uh, we we're growing, and so we've got a lot of uh, talent I've pulled from previous uh, team members. We have uh, you know some. Uh, mainframe team members that have been around for a while. Uh, I made the decision explicitly on our website to take down the team page because I wanted the focus not to be on the individuals building the project, but I wanted it to uh, really be on the substance that mainframe delivers or doesn't. And this is something that you know came as I talked to the community and wanted to understand uh, you know, what changes can I make that are gonna help build trust and so We've taken that down. We might add it up uh, here in a little bit so that you can kind of have just a very strong sense of who it is, uh, you know, the the names and faces behind the protocol. Uh, but if you, you know, peel back the layers enough, if you go look at the GitHub repo, if you go, uh, you know, look at our social media and, you know, join our Discord, you're going to start to piece together that uh, regardless. So those are a couple of the changes we made. The, the website is very uh, simple and focused because I don't want to create any sort of distraction around uh, or give any attention to anything that isn't uh, the substance that we're trying to deliver on. Okay, now let's jump. So that's kind of my report on where we're doing. Uh, do I think there's... Well, at this point, I'm feeling um, the the team is kind of running at capacity, and so we're going to have to do a little bit of growth there. So if there's one area that I'm going to be really focusing on between now and the next AMA, it's making sure that we have the right uh, members aligned and uh, uh, on, on our team. So uh, look forward to that. Again, okay. so... Okay, the Coin King is asking when's the ETA for the Lending Protocol. So three months, just for anybody who uh, is finally joining with us. And that's what we're looking for, uh, V0. And uh, I'll say it here. I don't know because I'm an engineer and I know well enough to not uh, try to uh, set expectations. We always want to under-promise and over-deliver. Uh, the, so, so the three-month timeline, what does that mean? Well... Uh, likely it means that I'll be able to tell you what it means as we get closer. But I'm hoping for something that's on chain uh, that you can start poke around with. And, uh, and, and I'm not certain at like today whether or not that's going to be a, a closed beta group or, um, or you know, the actual like, hey, we're launching. But I expect that we'll try and iterate from V0 to one, you know, version one or two. And we'll start with the most simplest form of the protocol and then add existing uh, or add additional modules for new improvements to it to realize the full vision that we paint in the white paper. Okay. Um, okay it seems like everyone wants the latest update on the protocol. Uh, yeah. It, you know, this, this past week was a really big week for mainframe. So, you know, we published sort of this standard and, uh, and, and, and I don't, I think all I'll say is that I don't think that the momentum is going to die down uh, immediately. So, so use Twitter, don't even use Discord. Okay, so, so the, the idea around Discord, uh, Coin King, is that uh, we want structured conversation and we want people to be able to come back asynchronously and be able to reference. Uh, I give out a lot of information in the Discord channel and in, in, in te you know, previously Telegram. And so the, um, I, I think Discord is important to have a place where uh, we, we are in control of, you know, what attention we're driving to which topics. And, uh, and I think Twitter is just a little bit more free form than what uh, would be uh, constructive. And so uh, I, we, we do try and use Twitter um, to point you, uh, you know, around all the major updates to let you know when something's going on in Discord or you know, to know about these AMAs. And so 
um, so I respectfully declined the invitation to switch our community to 100% Twitter. Okay, how will security and stability of the lending protocol match up against lending competitors like BlockFi, Celsius, Dharma? Okay, so let's, I've spent a lot of time digging into uh, these different lending protocols. I look over here because this screen is, uh, it's a picture of me and it distracts me. So I'll, I'll try and look at the camera, but uh, when you see me looking over, there's nothing interesting but my door to the office. Uh, so, so security and stability of the lending protocol, how does it match up against competitors? Well, in my brain, it matches up really well and it beats them in every conceivable metric because that's where the protocol is most complete. It's, it's something that lives in Doug's brain today. Now, um, uh, you know, with my job, as I covered earlier, being that I need to sell confidence, here's what I imagine. You know, we've got some, when, when I look at the landscape, uh, so BlockFi is uh, a centralized solution. And I think that, you know, you look at BlockFi and I think, you know, BlockFi is closer to what Mick is building over at Genesis Block, where you've got some very uh, nice user experience that is going to bridge, you know, people like, uh, you know, the, the non-crypto community and give them access to the opportunities that we're creating within crypto. And so, you know, BlockFi and Genesis Block, those guys are uh, essential and, and something that we are not going to be. Um, and so uh, let, let's take a look at a couple of, of these other options for, you know, uh, comparing ourselves against. So, so Celsius, another lending protocol, and Dharma, which, as I understand, Dharma is a uh, essentially a front end for a, a very beautiful front end for um, the Compound protocol. When I'm comparing ourselves to other protocols, the two protocols that I compare myself to are uh, Ave and Compound. And the thing that, if you read our white paper, that really um, excites me is that we are not in a mutually exclusive equation to you know, either of those protocols. You know, there's this concept called superfluidity of collateral. And if we want to create a destination for collateral and assets under management that maximizes the returns using uh, you know, all the existing, uh, you know, yield farming, lending protocols, uh, you know, any way that we can stack in income streams on top of your collateral, collateral and uh, turn it to something that's idle, boring, and just sitting there into something that uh, is, you know, hopefully uh, giving you a yield better than uh, what, you know, parking it in a, a high interest savings account would do. And so, when, when I look at what the transition, you know, as we launch, I imagine we'll do a V0. And then Mainframe is going to be very interested in using its resources to, you know, get the proper security audits in place before we ever launch for anyone to put any real money on, uh, you know, within our protocol. And then the second thing, you know, the second layer of, um, of security, you know, really is insurance. And so we... We'll be working very closely with, uh, hopefully, you know, people like or companies like Nexus Mutual, where you can get, you know, some whales to come on over, take their uh, collateral and park it in our protocol with peace of mind that even if a vulnerability is discovered, uh, that you know they can still sleep at night. So I, I look at this, I'm, I'm you know. If you look at my history going to, uh, you know, I've got my master's degree from BYU and I, I, in information systems with an emphasis in security. I was a part of the red team for uh, BYU, got to hack into their systems, you know, both, you know, physical and uh, cyber uh, pen testing. And, uh, you know, with that background, it kind of steers me. You're never going to hear me say that, uh, any piece of code is bulletproof. Uh, I'm, I'm not so naive to think that, but there are sufficient safeguards and tools that we can equip our users with 
so that they're uh, mitigated against any risks, any new discoveries, any zero days um, that we could not anticipate during the development process. So, uh, so how is it going to stack up to Ave and Compound? So in my mind, we want to be out the gate on day one equally as secure, meaning we've audited with at least one, but hopefully more than one uh, security firm. I'm in contact with consensus diligence. Previously, we have had a relationship with a couple of other uh, security auditors and uh, QuantStamp who did our ERC-20 token uh, uh, audit. And, and so we'll be reaching back out as soon as we have uh, the actual code for them to look at. And then adding that insurance layer, I think will uh, help everybody feel um, comfortable on day, day one. And then if we're really, really wanting to heat things up, we're, we're, we're gonna use our protocol to help subsidize some of the costs uh, potentially around um, the, um, the insurance and and potentially around the gas fees, uh, you know, Ethereum is running at capacity, and this is this is you know if if anyone were to ask the question what keeps me up at night, uh, it's gas prices. Ethereum is full. There's too much innovation happening on Ethereum, and unfortunately, we all seem to agree that we're not leaving Ethereum, uh, and uh, and so. Uh, it, 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 you know, simple supply and demand. Uh, I'm hoping for uh, we'll, that we'll see a little bit of improvement before the full ETH2 rollout. Um, we will be experimenting with, uh, you know, some of the newer technologies around optimistic rollups after we actually get a V0 out. And, uh, and so uh, we may have to bootstrap with, um, with, you know, our own war chest helping to subsidize uh, people's uh, participation in our protocol so that they'll give us a chance. I'm super excited about making it easy for anybody to come and onboard with uh, mainframe and, and benefit from uh, our protocol. Uh, if you wanted a to-do task today to, to get close to the experience I'm imagining for our protocol, go and download the Argent app. You know, Mainframe hosted a dinner at the, at, the, um, at the Ethereum DevCon uh, a couple of years ago, and I sat down and had invited out you know, to this private dinner that we hosted, uh, Itmar from Argent. And we sat down for that evening, and I think I was like you know, number 25 to sign up for their Argent wallet. Uh, and... And they've created a smart contract, non-custodial solution that has social recovery baked in. I imagine, and I haven't discussed it with them, but you know, maybe they're watching the video. I imagine we'll do with them what you see Ave doing with them, which is you sign up for a wallet, you create a guardian so that if you ever delete the app or lose your phone, uh, somebody else can help you recover your funds and and then you go in, deposit your Ethereum, and in you know one or two clicks, you've purchased. You know today the experience is A tokens, but in the future I think it'll be mainframe Y tokens, and uh, and they're subsidizing the gas cost for Ave transactions. And so anybody who's using Ave today and not using Argent is flushing, you know, Ethereum in, into the toilet. So. Uh, check them out and go do that. And that's the type of experience I'm hoping that we will be able to deliver to our users as well. Uh, the thing that makes it, uh, that protects that sort of incentive from being gamed is that Argent requires a phone number verification. And so you have a reasonable degree of assurance that users aren't you know, farming thousands and thousands of wallets uh, in order to you know, get these subsidies. And so, uh, you know, I look forward to making some developments on that front. Um, but this is the type of experience that I'm imagining in my mind is that, you know, somebody comes in and it's very easy to enter and leave our protocol. Now, back to the zero sum, you know, the relationship between Ave, mainframe, mainframe and compound is not zero sum. 
we want and and hopefully will support shortly out of the gate for those groups to be able to park your C tokens and A tokens or from the M stable community, uh, your M assets. And so we are not competing directly against any of these uh, protocols. In fact, we want them, uh, we want to be the maximized destination for yield within DeFi. And so you, you, you'll have access to tools where, you know, if you look at the white paper and look at our example walkthrough, and then, you know, the last two paragraphs of that example walkthrough, it was very difficult to write because there's so much going on with Grace earning an income from Compound, earning an income from flash loans on mainframe, and leveraging the borrower's collateral to multiply her income from the flash loans. And, and that's all on top of any, any sort of yield she can... Uh, you know, she can earn from uh, participating in other aspects of the um, of uh, of our ecosystem. And that's also ignoring the, you know, any uh, bootstrapping incentives we might uh, add that uh, is similar to the yield farming you're seeing today, the liquidity mining that uh, you see with comp and, and some of these other protocols. So composability and super fluidity are the future of DeFi, and we want this is the area we want to innovate. Areas we are not interested in innovate, innovating, community management. I want to take existing systems I see working with other communities, copy and paste. I'm uninterested in innovating on uh, some of the other like business structures. We want to be a follower and learn from other people's lessons that go before us on uh, how they're structuring their businesses. We want uh, we want to just stick to what we know works and uh, and copy and paste as we see success uh, from these communities. Bootstrapping liquidity. We're watching comp closely. We watch synthetics with incredible success. In terms of uh, token economics, we we look at uh, you know kind of doing a hybrid between the synthetic system of adding these uh, staking rewards and uh, the compound system of driving value towards people who are using the protocol. I think you'll see that from us uh, because I know the guy who's in charge of making that decision right now. And so we're, we're really trying to tighten in on what things mainframe is going to innovate on and what things mainframe is going to follow on. And the, the, the most concise answer I can give you is we innovated on our liquidation mechanism within the protocol and that allows us to achieve greater capital efficiency, higher leverage, and avoid uh, systematic failures that we saw on Black Thursday in the Maker protocol when several million dollars of DAI, uh, or their, their system became under collateralized by seven, several million dollars of DAI. Some uh, bot was able to put zero dollar bids for Ethereum collateral. Our system, is theoretically impervious to this type of, um, of breakdown. Now, we, we, we have made certain trade-offs to, to accomplish that, but, uh, but you know, th this, is, this is the area of innovation uh, that, that we are focused on. Okay, let's get some more questions. <clears throat> Still working, commendable. Thank you, O oh, Manny Army 69. Great name. So uh, still working. I, I assume you're like surprised like many on Twitter that mainframe is even a thing. Uh, well, thanks to our uh, predecessor and you know Mick Hagen and how he managed our uh, systems resources, our uh, you know the funds that we use to raise uh, resources to pursue these different decentralized products. Uh, yeah, we're in a reasonably good position. And I only expect that it's going to be getting better over the next few months. So stay tuned. Uh, this is a long-term project, not overnight hype. Well, I think it's a balance between the two. We like to, we like to have the hype and we like to stay around. Uh, it turns out it's nice having a job doing something you love. And so that's something worth protecting. And, you know, talking with the team, uh, we're willing to make the sacrifices necessary to make our runway, you know, last so that we have the highest 
po like the highest probability of success in, in building this protocol. So uh, not only is it just me who's got this alignment, but uh, everyone on the team is uh, really committed to making this work. It's, it's been really cool to see as, uh, you know, main, mainframe has had, uh, uh, I was going to say ups and downs, but it seems like it's been a lot of downs ever since uh, the, the initial launch. But you know, you look at any token that launched uh, at the beginning of 2018, and it, it was a systematic bleed out. So uh, I don't really, uh, I don't really lose sleep over the fact that uh, we follow the trends in cryptocurrency broadly. If you're, you know, judging our success by token price, but uh, for for those who are, are willing to stick around and those who you know choose different investment strategies like dollar cost averaging. Uh, that are a little bit more conservative, you know, they're, they're loving life right now. Okay. Any updates on Genesis Block and its relation to MFT? So Mick tweeted, so go look at Mick Hagen's um, Twitter account. So, he, uh, so I, I went out to dinner last night with the board, which is Brad and Mick. And uh, we had a, a very lengthy discussion around token economics uh, around uh, some of the growth that mainframe is experiencing right now, how we're managing that. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there was discussion around Genesis block and, and the relationship there. Mick is hyped to get integrated with uh, mainframe. Mick is, you know, we, we, we don't actually, you know, it's hard to know whether or not somebody's holding a larger bag than him on an exchange. But I say with confidence that he's got to be top three in terms of MFT holders. Uh, he, you know, so, so, uh, and so I, I, I uh, in terms of like aligned incentives, if Mick is in a position where he's going to drive value back to MFT, he's only going to like, uh, he's only going to be driving value back to himself. And, you know, uh, we're both excited to integrate together. I think, uh, the, the only thing that's kind of left to do is uh, finish building. So, uh, so in, in terms of MFT, you know, Mick is in a different position than the entity he's building with Genesis Block, but both are assets that will be a strong part of our community. We will have sort of these, um, these corporate uh, partners who will be responsible for certain aspects of managing the system. And then we're going to have whales like Mick who are also have different responsibilities that are, you know, like everyone here to increase their yield and here to uh, leverage these tools to their benefit. And so um, this should come at no surprise. You know, if, if there were a headline, it would be, you know, bag holder shills his own bags and, uh, and is excited to leverage his his new startup to grow his bags. Like it, it's a, it, it wouldn't be a very exciting headline. But yeah, Mick is uh, he, he's all in. He's still all in. All like he really has uh, been from the beginning. And I think the thing that it impressed me most is when he you know he he kind of took a look around and recognized that. Uh, you know, the way the, tr the community treated him and uh, he, he didn't, you know, see that he was, you know, in his judgment, he didn't believe that he was uh, best suited to, to take mainframe through the next pivot. And so, uh, it, so, so he, he called me up and here we are today. So um, I, I think uh, if there's like, if you just, just take a look around guys and girls. So if, if you if you look around at the landscape, what token has a small market cap that's coming into uh, that's coming into DeFi, has a listing on Binance, has corporate partnerships lined up? Like to me, the the only thing that we're missing is a time machine so that we can accelerate this process. I am I I am. I care so much about this, like, you know, this position and pursuing these opportunities is my lifelong dream. And I do not want to put that at risk for anything. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, having kids where it's like, you know, it might be something you really want to do, but you're not going to put them in danger just because it makes the, the story cool. 
In the same way, I think Nick has exercised great, you know, prudence in you know recognizing what was best for mainframe. And then as he passed it on to me, I look at his example and I think, look, I can I can rush things forward and we can have you know some BZX type incidents on our hands where we didn't think things through well enough. And so I care so much about mainframe. I'm willing to be patient and move forward. And as as we try and establish ourselves as a core protocol for DeFi. And, and I think you'll see the type of explosive growth that, uh, you know, compound and synthetics that these guys have experienced um, it, because we care. Well, I'm not interested in spending all the money and in, in, uh, uh, in having this thing die off. That I mean, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd have to, you know, figure something else out. Like we, we want this to work and we care so much that we're willing to be patient for the results. And I think we saw that as the community was patient for the white paper and being able to deliver, you know, once the business, the marketing and the technical side was all ready, that's when we went to market with it. And, uh, you know, you don't have to look at the chart, you know, very long to understand that that was the right decision to make if you're here to make money, which I happen to be. So, uh, if that resonates with you, then I, I think you're in for a good ride. Okay, so how big of a problem do you think gas fees present to adoption slash engagement? Yeah, so the metrics are baffling. I do not make sense of them right now. I look at our lemon coin video that we, we produced, and even two years later, we're at 30,000 views. You know, this is something that got the attention of some of the executives at uh, Coinbase. I know that uh, CZ commented about it uh, from Binance. And, and so like that video had a lot of reach and only has 30,000 views. Our token price for the last week had phenomenal growth. And I, I, don't, I don't care to speculate on token price because I figure if we, if we focus on the fundamentals, then the market will follow because I judge the market more broadly uh, as a whole to be rational, but I, I certainly don't judge individuals to be necessarily rational within the market. But the w w when I when I look at this and you look at how many views our short explainer video got, uh, after 24 hours, we were at like 600. And so my as I try and paint a picture of the landscape of DeFi right now, I think the people who are most active don't care one lick about paying a dollar in gas fees. The people who care are the people who are uh, who don't have the economies of scale. And so as I look at even my own participation in some of these uh, protocols, I myself, you know, I, I try to be very prudent and reasonable with like, I dollar cost averages. I dollar cost average into Bitcoin for several years, and I, I continue to dollar cost average. A certain percentage of my paycheck goes into you know my investments within the space, all DeFi today, and uh, and I'm one of those people who are kind of at the fringe where like I've had to slow down my own participation in these protocols because sometimes the yield that I'm earning is. Uh, actually less than what it's going to cost to claim it. So I think people are, for the most part, rational, and I don't think they're going to participate if the system doesn't allow for them to make a profit or make a, a rational decision. Um, we've got ideas. Uh, if, you want, if you want to know where we're, what we're thinking about, go take a look at UMA. UMA is, uh, you know, they actually did a Y token recently for comp. It allowed you to take a short position on comp. And uh, if you look at how their Oracle system works, they've designed a very clever system that, that, uh, that tra makes the trade off of instead of, you know, pinging an Oracle for a price of an asset, they say, let's get uh, you know, I'll speak figuratively here. Let's get a, a, a group of investors in the room who have an incentive uh, to uh, act honestly, and let's ask them what the price is. But but instead of asking them, 
let's just have them watch and see if anybody is misbehaving and then say, if somebody is misbehaving, there is a reward here for you to correct that behavior and protect the system that you're uh, aligned with in, in sort of your, in your financial, um, uh, you're aligned with financially. And so they, they, they've got this clever system that doesn't need an Oracle. They call it priceless, uh, priceless synthetics, I think, because as long as people are uh, um, acting honestly, then the system doesn't need to interact with, you know, you, you don't need an on-chain price feed. Uh, and even when the system acts dishonestly or individuals within the system acts dishonestly, you, uh, you don't need an on-chain price feed. You rely on people who have the proper incentives to come in and take that dishonest individual to court and you, all, you put a bounty on their head. And, and so uh, this is a protocol that, uh, that, that is really adapting to the, um, to, to the current circumstances around gas prices, you know, for the different blocks. The, uh, I think we're going to see a lot of innovation here. We've got the, you know, the uh, optimistic roll-ups that uh, can, can kind of take a lot of transactions, distill it down into, uh, you know, a, a smaller gas price than if you did it all on chain and then write that state to, um, to the blockchain. I, I think that, you know, uh, necessity is the bane of, of creativity here. And I think we're going to see a lot of very creative solutions come out in the next couple of years. Uh, and, and I think we will choose the boring route first. Okay, so yeah, I think I was I was talking about the gas prices, uh, how much of an issue does it think, and and really just kind of uh, uh, sharing that I I think it's a big problem, but when I look at um, the metrics around DeFi, I really um, am baffled that there is. Uh, there, there seems to be a subset, a very powerful, wealthy subset that's participating in DeFi and trying to be the earliest uh, that doesn't seem to care. So I only think it's likely going to get worse before it gets better. And, oh, and UMA has this very novel, um, has this very novel solution that you can use today. Uh, we've looked at it, but uh, I will prioritize being boring using something that is expensive and maybe that doesn't even rationally make sense to use. And in other words, shipping uh, before I'm going to try and experiment and solve all of these problems at once. Let's get the protocol out there and then let's, uh, you know, let's put pressure on uh, Ethereum to develop uh, solutions that are easy for us to adapt. Uh, so, so that, um, you know, because Ethereum wins when we win and uh, you know, they are our, they are the security layer for our protocol and what uh, really powers the decentralization of uh, DeFi. Okay, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna read through a couple of questions uh, from the previous chat uh, before uh, I come over to these questions over here and I'll try to um, be a little bit more concise. You get me talking about DeFi and uh, we'll be here all day. Without revealing confidential information, how is mainframe's financial status in short and long terms? Well, it's the same in both short and long terms, since our uh, our runway is uh, is is the same whether or not you are thinking short or long term. Uh, our we're in a better position than when I started, and uh, I you know and, and uh, I, I think because we uh, believe in ourselves and we've taken a big bet on ourselves, uh, that will only continue to improve in. Um, the closer we get to actually delivering on the substance of what we've laid out in the vision with the white paper. Okay, so uh, the Coin King needs to join our Discord so he can be one of our guardians and help coach us through uh, leveraging Twitter uh, properly. Uh, I have no problem uh, with uh, recognizing where, uh, you know, I'm an engineer. You're, you're not going to outcode me, you know, you're not going to... Uh, you know, do certain things that I'm like, you know, I, I feel like I really excel at. Uh, and I love accepting help from members of the community who want to help promote mainframe, who want to uh, help us in how we're 
uh, declaring ourselves and how we're positioning ourselves in the minds of DeFi users. So, uh, Coin King, why don't you come join us in our Discord and we can uh, have you be a part of our Guardian uh, program so that uh, you can have a more direct influence. How's your collaboration with Genesis Bot going so far? Well, so far uh, it's going great uh, because they watch us and we watch them and we cheer each other on because we are both gonna win when the other wins. Uh, there, there's not much substance to it except the, the very clearly aligned incentives. Uh, for a while there, we weren't gonna try and talk about the partnership, but uh, you know, the cat's out of the back and you know, you'll, you'll see as soon as both products are live, uh, there's gonna be an integration. Uh, you know, Genesis Block has a very unique value proposition in driving users to the benefits of decentralized technology without requiring them to uh, have um, uh, the know-how and, and take the same risks of managing your own private keys. If you look at the, the success of BlockFi, I think Genesis Block is positioning themselves uh, very well to um, be uh, you know, this bridge, this stopgap between decentralized and centralized finance. So, uh, you know, I've, I was a part of their uh, initial beta testing and uh, I'm really excited about it. Who doesn't want to, uh, you know, make crypto more mainstream in their life uh, if, it, if it doesn't come at the cost of, uh, you know, certain trade-offs. And I think Genesis Block does a really good job at uh, managing that for users. What's our unique selling proposition or value capture? Ave and other pro Ave and the others more mature platforms. Are you considering other channels for adoption besides Genesis Block? <clears throat> so there's one key uh, difference between every lending protocol that's uh, you know got some serious adoption that the, and the leaders that I really consider to be out there. Uh, it's Compound and Ave, and they are excellent at offering you variable rate solutions. Ave has a, a, a variable rate um, option that they solicit in their marketing as stable rate, which just means that you're, you're less variable. And, uh, but it, it's not, so, so where, where our differentiating factor is, is we have uh, fixed rate lending and this has many more practical use cases uh, for you know translating into real world uh, use and leveraging of crypto. So you know mainframe is going to be the destination for you to come, you know, deposit your crypto collateral, take out a, a loan against it, and have the peace of mind that uh, tomorrow morning when you wake up, your APR hasn't gone from one percent to twenty four percent. If if you're watching these uh, you know, the yield farming that's happening uh, in DeFi today, um, you have no such guarantees with these other protocols because it's a simple supply demand on a curve. And, uh, and so we will be able to meet expectations of uh, users. You know, you're not gonna buy a house if there's a, a risk of your interest rate going from, you know, 1% to 25%. Uh, you're, you're unlikely going to buy a car. I, 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 I leveraged MakerDAO to purchase my minivan, you know, a year or two ago. And uh, this exact scenario played out for me at the beginning of the month. I had an interest rate of below 2% that I was paying against my ETH uh, collateral that I'd locked up. And then at, by the end of the month, I, I was up at, you know, 17% APR. And that's also because ETH grew by 70% during that three month period. But guess what? You're not gonna finance a car for you know three to five years uh, if there's that risk involved. Uh, with mainframe, you'll be able to lock in your terms uh, at a fixed rate. And so uh, that would be the unique value proposition. And I imagine that we will build products on top of this layer that gives us similar perpetual products like Ave, where somebody can come show up, park their money in mainframe, and uh, we will automatically roll it into the next fixed term, fixed rate loan, uh, or fixed term, fixed rate lending opportunity within the protocol. So 
And, uh, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, we're probably getting dangerously close to talking about, you know, over a year out. Uh, but uh, yeah, these things will develop naturally because uh, there, there's uh, no doubt that these things are in demand. I think I really, I really, so I hold Aave, I hold, I mean, a tiny amount of comp because I think we're still in the process of price discovery there. But uh, I, I'm i cheering for Ave success because they represent the opportunity that exists for us. You know, if you look, if you compare market caps between where mainframe's at, you know, even today we're, we're bouncing between 13, $14 million market cap and in and, and Aave, you know, several hundred million dollar market cap. Uh, that should make people excited in this community. Yeah, we're not there today, but uh, we're going to start tasting it here pretty soon and actually being able to use our NFT, deposit collateral, take out loans and, you know, uh, leverage your crypto with, without uh, necessarily having to have the tax consequences of selling it. There's, there's a lot of reasons why people will leverage us. What is a new MFT? Well, we only have one MFT, but I like that it's new for some people. Uh, I imagine there's gonna be a lot of changes coming to MFT. And the reason I imagine that is because I have a very large influence on those changes. And uh, you know, I go back to my earlier statement, uh, we're following the synthetics playbook. If you're familiar with what's happened to them in the last, uh, let's say, 18 months, then uh, you probably got a pretty good idea of what's coming down uh, the pipeline for MFT and mainframe. The DeFi is the same as Uniswap Comp MakerDAO. Is, is this app like InstaDAP? Uh, I think I need a little bit more clarity, uh, Vitaly. Uh, if you will clarify that question, I, I don't know exactly, is the app like InstaDAP? Well, I find InstaDAP pretty reasonable uh, in terms of user experience, and I hope ours will be reasonable too. Uh, I, I think they're offering some value propositions there, but our like we're a protocol. We're not just a DAP. We're, we're going to be a lot more than you. You'll have multiple DAPs that you could uh, leverage our protocol for. InstaDAP likely would integrate with us if uh, uh, if we're in you know if we're materially successful here in our endeavor. Oh, what, 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 what will the role of MFT be? Okay, so um, I presume that you didn't read the white paper because we, we do a reasonable job of outlining uh, this. And also I created a Twitter thread yesterday or the day before that specifically outlines it. But here's, here's kind of, I'll, I'll give you kind of my framework uh, for, for thinking around this. It's very important to me that for the variables that we're in control of, that we don't introduce additional friction to adoption. And if you watch the lemon coin video, it's laughable that in order for, uh, you know, Austin in that video to pay for my lemonade, that he has to go and purchase Ethereum for the privilege of sending me, uh, you know, the, the lemon tokens, the lemon coin. And, uh, and so it is my intention that we don't place MFT between our end users and make it strictly required, meaning that MFT will be optional. Now, but I, I kind of describe it this way because I want everyone to have a healthy amount of concern. Uh, but because I already know the answer, let me, let me kind of finish explaining as to how I resolve that concern. NF, so, so when you look at what our unique value, like where we chose to innovate, which was specifically around the liquidation of collateral uh, in that liquidation mechanism, if you're, if you're deep in an understanding of the uh, MakerDAO protocol and how those auctions work and what the breakdown that their system experienced on Black Thursday uh, was, uh, I took the keeper role within the MakerDAO protocol and I took it from like this back office, somebody, you know, was writing a bot in a basement to, you know, bid on these auctions opportunistically. And I flipped that model and said, you know what, let's make our keepers uh, be a first class citizen, not something that is extracting value from the ecosystem, arbitraging it away. Let's give the benefit. You look at, so if, if you dig into their protocol, 
they take your Ethereum, they discount it, and then they auction it off to these bots who then make an instant arbitrage. It's a very important and essential role, but only a very small group, a very small subset of individuals qualify to participate in those auctions because of the barriers to entry that exist. And I said, I believe that in DeFi, resources will flow to where they are more efficiently used. And, uh, and so if mainframe is the most efficient de destination for your collateral, we will manage the most assets in all of DeFi. And now it's not mutually exclusive because you know already you can park all of your A tokens and all your C tokens within mainframe and stack your uh, stack your income streams. The uh, but if we use it most efficiently, we win. And so we are after that efficiency. And so what what I've done is we have innovated on the liquidation mechanism. We have surface that opportunity to regular everyday people that don't need a, an engineering degree or to uh, be able to write a bot to participate in those auctions. And we made it a pool. And, uh, and so there's a very low barrier to entry to being a keeper within our system. We call them guarantors because the failure, uh, and if you reference our explainer video or the personas we have throughout our white paper, the failure of Bob to repay, or excuse me, the failure of Brad to repay on his loan is the opportunity for Grace to purchase that collateral at a discount. As somebody who loves dollar cost averaging into crypto, I can't imagine a better way to grow my investment within crypto than to dollar cost average into crypto in a random walk of people who leverage themselves too much or fall asleep or lose their private keys that get liquidated and get that, get that random walk of purchasing crypto at a discount. It's dollar cost averaging at a discount. I couldn't be more excited to, to you know, take it from this thing that is hidden in a dark corner and you need an engineering degree and only the neck beards or, or have access to that opportunity to offer it to everybody. And by doing so, we establish our reputation as, as a protocol where we want your capital to be most efficiently used, superfluidity between uh, composability with other protocols, and uh, and this sort of uh, surfacing the uh, and dropping the barriers to entry for you know the keeper, uh, which we call the guarantor, uh, is what will I think uh, set mainframe apart. Um, if somebody makes you money. You really like that somebody. I think people are really going to like us. Um, and so, so back to MFT. So where does MFT fit in? So the, the thing is, we meticulously examined, and if we missed a spot, all you got to do is message me on Telegram, and I'll update the white paper. But everywhere that our protocol delivers value, what we did is we took the innovation around being most efficient in our liquidation mechanism, and we said, OK, let's pretend that I'm Doug, I've got a, a stash of crypto and I wanna go buy a minivan. You know, I did this a couple of years ago, so I know this experience intimately. You know, I'm gonna lock up $20,000 worth of Ethereum to make a $10,000 purchase. And, and that's because MakerDAO at the time had a 150% collateralization requirement. So let me let you in on a little secret. By pre-arranging a buyer in the event of Brad's failure to repay his, uh, his loan, we can lower the collateral requirement of Lucy, uh, or excuse me, of Brad, and allow him to either uh, have more protection against liquidation or have... Uh, have more leverage, which, mean, which means for the same minivan that costs $10,000, we can get that down to only needing a deposit of $1,250. So because the, competi the, the competitive landscape is that, you know, I need a 150% collateralization ratio, what we do, this is in my brain right now, and uh, we didn't choose to define it this detailed in the white paper because 
ultimately it's going to be managed by governance and MFT holders. So these are variables, but this is where I think we position ourselves the strongest and where you'll find my MFT uh, behind the voting of these uh, parameters. But anybody is welcome to come and use our protocol at 150% collateralization requirement, meaning that we are equally as good as the alternatives that exist in the system. And I'm, I'm comparing us to Maker and we'll do a more uh, in-depth competitive analysis, but I say we take the, the collateral requirements of the other mainstream DeFi protocols, uh, lending protocols. And you'll be, we'll match them, right? We're, we're, we're going to match them. And then, but already you have an incentive to participate here because we'll let you bring those C tokens. We'll let you bring those, uh, your, your chai. We'll let you bring your uh, Aave or M stable or M assets and, and park them. And so already you're able to double the income that those uh, productive residual interest bearing tokens uh, uh, are, are bringing you. And so by matching them, we already have an advantage. And then we say to Brad, who's either interested in, you know, I think there's two different types of Brad. One who wants more protection. You know, that's somebody who's like, if you look at the largest vaults on MakerDAO, uh, they are over collateralized, you know, by you know, 500 plus percent collateralization requirement, which means for a $10,000 loan, they're parking $50,000 worth of collateral. And that's because they don't want to babysit their, their, their risk. They want the exposure, they want the loan, and then they want to come back in six months and pay it off when they know they've made a return on that $10,000. So for Brad, who's conservative and wants the protection, well, he can have the same protection with less collateral requirement if he shows up with MFT, stakes it, locks it up, right, or potentially burns it. So, so I think there'll be a transition where we are uh, allowing people to just lock up their tokens for long periods of time, and they qualify to take 150% collateralization ratio down to 112%. So that is what MFT is going to do for you. If you want to go long on any of our base collateral assets and really leverage yourself to the hilt, by golly, mainframe, you're going to love it. If you're the type of person who wants more protection of your collateral asset with greater capital efficiency, well, by golly, MFT is your ticket for that safety. And so, so that's Brad. And so, but we're not done. You've got Grace, our guarantor, who has her own incentives where we look at the competitive landscape and say, look, we want it to be easy for people to come. And so we're gonna match any benefit in the ecosystem and then if you come and sprinkle in MFT, that's your leverage to get the most amount out of our system. And so Grace is a part of the guarantor pool. She deposits her assets. And if she shows up with MFT, she will get a greater allocation of the profits. Our system is designed from end to end to drive value back to MFT. This is our commitment. This is why I exist as a CEO is to drive our value back to MFT and see appreciation in that token. Because if we're driving value there, people will care and people will better pay attention and govern our system to last and outlast uh, our, our own lives. And so I need to build the most fair system that is open to anyone, irrespective of if they have MFT bags, but I'm willing to offer them that bring MFT the greatest advantage within our system. And I imagine what it will be is the mainframe DAP is going to be a, uh, it, it really is a funnel for MFT ownership. It's like, you know, the, the, the beginner level users of our protocol, you know, somebody who's, you know, loves Aave and just wants to increase their earnings, they come and park it over here as collateral. And then they'll, they'll realize one day that if they, if they add a little bit of MFT, they're, they're, they're going to increase their, their earnings or they're going to increase their safety or they're going to increase their leverage. So, uh, and then MFT will play a very important role in the long-term sustainability. I've taken, so this is an area I'm uninterested in uh, innovating in, is, is kind of that, that, 
that uh, the structure of how the company and operation works. I look at I look at uh, um, MakerDAO, and I look at how they have their um, their protocol buffer. They have their development fund, and we are going to just copy and paste that into our system. Meaning that there's going to be resources here that are sustainable from MFT use that pay for the continuous need for security audits that pay for the subsidization of gas fees when we want to run those promotions of insurance as we're trying to bootstrap the network and for the developers and ultimately hopefully my salary. I would love a system that is perpetual enough to employ me for you know multiple decades. So, so I hope mainframe is it for me and we need a sustainable system and we're at the very beginning stages of that. We have all the context of our, our previous, uh, you know, stubbing our toe with our previous products. And, and honestly, if this doesn't work out and my research and hypothesis is incorrect about DeFi being able to drive a sustainable operation to mainframe, we'll pivot again. Make no mistake about it. We're in it for the long haul and we're gonna create a system that drives value back to MFT. That's something I'm reasonably passionate about. Okay, next question. Any bonuses for longtime holders? Your bonus is that we're still here. Uh, I, I think the, the any bonus, I, I, you know, the free market doesn't really reward someone who, uh, you know, we all thought that unstoppable chat was the thing. In fact, you as a community gave us millions of dollars to build unstoppable chat. You and I and Mick and everybody at Mainframe was wrong. And it's okay to be wrong because you're gonna be wrong when you're taking big risks. And so uh, the, the, the reward is, is probably in, you paid for probably the best education that you could have paid for a team to go through to be positioned to take advantage of, of this you know, pivot that we're in. And so it came at a high cost. But uh, I mean, it was bloody for all of us. People seem to represent that we were immune to it. I, I, I held to the bitter end. Like, uh, you know, it, it was bloody MFT. Like I just didn't even consider it uh, of any value as, as I came to a time when I, I, I transitioned away from mainframe. And, uh, you know, quite honestly, it's, it's the truth. Well, I don't think we need to hide from that truth. It is our reality and it is the opportunity that exists. If you, if, if MFT is halfway uh, successful, meaning that we even uh, see price action that gets us to one half of our pre-sale price, we'll have 10 X. This is, you know, this is a, I was trying to talk to one of my neighbors and making small chat and my world is crypto. And I was trying to tell him that like, yeah, no, I actually believe this. I, I think, I mean, I, you know, I, I really think the opportunity that exists in mainframe today is, is, uh, you know, 10X. And usually in my conversations with them, I, I just told him he's, he's a neighbor I trust. And he just, he just doesn't get it. Like you, you just can't see it. And, and I don't blame him. Like it's hard to see. But, but when you look at the fact that, that the, the market cap of the Aave is something like 27 times what mainframes is today, they have the product, their, their uh, lending, pro their stable coin, or excuse me, stable rate uh, lending product is the closest thing on the market to what mainframe is, is uh, going to be delivering beginning three months from now. Uh, and, and, and their 27x what our market cap is. I mean, that's just back of the napkin type math. And so your, 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 your reward for, for being a long-term holder is the opportunity to load up your bags today and, and, and join us for, for what I expect is gonna be a pretty, uh, uh, pretty difficult story to describe to my neighbors who are just not gonna understand the world of crypto and, and what we are experiencing. Are you guys working on some outside investors like VCs? Now we can talk more about that later. Uh, but yeah, we've got our existing investors. We've got uh, we've got an incredible amount of interest uh, coming in into uh, mainframe, and uh, 
and yeah, I, th I think you'll see some news around, um, you know, some, some uh, things, some, some areas I've been spending my bandwidth with. What's Mick doing? And how does his work relate to your project? Well, Mick sits on our board as, uh, at, in my estimation, at least the top three of all MFT holders. I only say top three because I think he's the top, but you know, maybe someone on exchange has bigger bags. Uh, and uh, he's he's building a startup that's trying that, that that has intent on integrating with DeFi protocols uh, like Mainframe. Uh, he is building a a BlockFi like application that appeals to centralized finance everyday users mainstream. Uh, he's trying to build a stock gap, a neo bank, and uh, uh, allow you to have FDIC insurance on your uh, USD deposits and easily dip in and out of crypto uh, for the U.S. market uh, initially. So uh, he's doing some cool stuff. I think you should pay attention to Genesis Bach. They've got their Discord. They've got you know he does podcasts uh, that you know these video blogs. Uh, Every, you know, it seems like every day based on my Twitter feed, but uh, I think every week he comes out with some new content and it's, it's definitely worth tuning into. And yeah, the, the, there's uh, some intent on the partnership there uh, where we will offer the benefits of our decentralized protocol to uh, people like, uh, you know, I, I like to characterize my mom as somebody who's probably not going to manage her private keys. And, uh, and so she would probably feel comfortable using Genesis Block to access her son's uh, utility he created. So how fast do you plan to make your project? I plan to make my project as fast as it is safe. Meaning those are the trade-offs. You wanna move fast, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna break some things. If, if, you, if you are willing to be a little patient, then you will uh, lay a foundation for uh, huge growth. Doug, any other exchanges coming? Coinbase, Voyager. Uh, so so here, here, here's the trouble with this question. If I knew, I couldn't even tell you. Uh, and uh, so thank you for asking. Ignore token prices, keep building. I generally agree with that sentiment but I think it's important that people know that our incentives align. And so uh, these past 48 hours have been pretty wild and I've appreciated this type of wild and I welcome it more. Why did MFT have their MFT BTC pair delisted? A great question. Uh, well, because Binance is interested in making money and uh, we haven't had a lot of price action up until this week. And uh, you know the cited reason they gave is that they uh, don't go sub sat pricing, meaning that you know mainframe was trading around um, I think it was eight to ten sats at the time, and the spreads were pretty big and, and kind of you had some indicators that it wasn't a very healthy market. Uh, they're delisting us uh, certainly um, had impact on how people valued our token, even though they just took off a single market. I think Binance has done a, a lot of good for mainframe. And I think that Binance is a part of our unique proposition as we, um, as we look to, into this um, DeFi pivot. And, you know, Ave just joined us on Binance and uh, it took them a while to get there, several years. We were fortunate enough to have been listed on Binance very early, but uh, you know they run their business. They'll they'll choose who gets to stay and who goes. Uh, I, I do have access to speaking with their team, but um, I, you know, th these things are just reasonable, rational decisions. If if they're not making money on us, they they lack the incentive to continue to support us, and. Uh, we consider it a, a very serious, um, you know, kind of threat to us during this vulnerable transition period that uh, as we plan out our treasury, as we plan out uh, these different things, I, um, I hope Binance and their diligence teams, uh, as well as Bittrex and some of the others where, you know, MFT may be at risk of uh, experiencing delisting, um, you know, 
do their job and, and take a serious look at what we're doing here. Uh, I feel reasonably confident after this week that we don't have problems anymore, but uh, yeah, they need to be making money if they're going to support us. And, um, and I think adding utility, I think delivering some substance and uh, announcing the white paper has done that for them. So I think our incentives uh, currently align, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if the volume ceases to exist on these exchanges, uh, I would delist us too. That's the truth. And, um, and we shouldn't be surprised by that, but, uh, I, you know, our, our volume was on a good day, $150,000 on the B and the MFT USDT pair. I watch it pretty closely. And, uh, you know, I think last night when I checked, we were sitting at 3 million on the day. And so, uh, things are looking really healthy. There's a lot of, uh, MFT exchanging hands, a lot of speculation happening. And that is an important part of what makes us tick. So uh, it, it sustains our ecosystem. Okay, so now I'm gonna jump over to these questions and we'll probably uh, you know, wrap it up here in just a bit. Are we con considering other channels for adoption besides Genesis Block? Honestly, I think Genesis Block is enough for today. We don't have a product. So my attention is on building and implementing. And I think as our team grows and my attention can be uh, um, spent on more business development, we'll, you know, we will uh, certainly have additional partnerships. It's in everyone's best interest. And so uh, if you happen to be connected to a, a group that has interest, then, you know, you know where to reach me on uh, Discord. It's very echoing. Yeah, I, I think when I yell in this room, uh, the acoustics aren't great. How many full-time web developers or admins are working with the team? It, yeah, we, we have sufficient for where our needs are today. Our team is going to be growing and uh, adding additional engineers to a project uh, does not necessarily accelerate it. In my judgment, we are optimized around delivering the most amount of value with the least amount of time between mainnet. And uh, we are letting the, indiv I, I, I have a belief in management that I try and let the individuals closest to the problem set make that decision. And so as soon as my engineers are asking for more engineers, I will pull the trigger on hiring more engineers. But uh, in discussions with them just last week, uh, I asked if we should be adding more and they said it would just slow us down between now and mainnet. So, uh, so yeah, we'll add them when it will accelerate uh, our development. Dan Robinson is implementing Y tokens with his yield project too. Absolutely. And uh, Dan Robinson is something, somebody that probably we will be indebted to for his innovation around the yield protocol. Uh, it is fair to say that the mainframe lending protocol is an instantiation of Dan Robinson's yield protocol. Nothing but respect for Dan, nothing but respect for uh, his team, but I uh, am sufficiently confident that our innovation is going to, uh, around the liquidation mechanism, it will separate us to where I think uh, any you know sufficiently sophisticated DeFi user uh, will have both uh, you know paradigms uh, investment into yield dot or yield dot is. Um, I, I think they'll deliver something that is much more an extension to the maker ecosystem, uh, whereas we are very much a separate um, you know, destination for maximized DeFi yields, uh, where we're trying to stack the most amount of income streams on your deposits. So um, I think the space is so young and new. Uh, I hope he builds something where we can park his Y tokens in our system as collateral. That's my hope. I think you can roll fixed fixed rate yield tokens into a weight adjusted, adjustable balancer pool. I think you're right. Is mainframe facing any significant regulatory challenges? So what? No, 
Uh, mainframe is a, a non-custodial solution and uh, I, I don't expect that the regulatory landscape is going to impact us in any material way. Uh, we, um, yeah, I, I, this is not something that is a concern uh, or on my radar. And so I think that we will uh, not have the, I, I think we'll have other types of issues, but this is not one of them that I'm anticipating. If that changes, then we'll we'll make uh, the appropriate adjustments. Oh, hi, Doug. Is there an announcement on the twenty fourth? Okay, so this is an interesting topic, and this is a place that I think I've decided to deviate from what the sentiment in the community is, and I don't necessarily take that decision lightly. So uh, it seems like our community, like others, are kind of burned out from announcements of announcements, and I think they have reason to be so to to do so. But if we have something in, you know, that, that, that's coming down the road, I want, you know, our community to be beneficiaries. But in order for the community to be beneficiaries, uh, we have to attract an audience that is much, you know, much larger than ourselves. And so in, in talking with the PR firm that we're working with, uh, th they have encouraged me to, you know, let the community and the broader public know when, um, you know, when they should be tuning in for anything of uh, material value. And so let me look at my calendar. Uh, so you're asking about announcement on the 24th. Uh, well, we should have an announcement. Uh, yeah, it got pushed, but we, we thought we were gonna make it on Tuesday. Now it's Thursday and so if, if I'm like giving a rough estimate, it's either going to be uh, you know, next Thursday or the following Tuesday. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we've been hard at work and uh, we've got exciting stuff to share. And I, I think that um, we've got uh, some sustainable momentum that will continue to carry us forward. So, uh, so last call, any last questions you want to ping to me, I'll kind of wrap up uh, with a summary of, of my thoughts. We had an incredible reception to our, the, you know, what I see is a, a cohesive launch of our explainer video, the white paper and an updated website. I couldn't be more pleased with how that reception has gone. I'm excited for, you know, some, some announcements that I'm aware of that we will want to um, share with you, uh, our community and a, a broader public audience uh, in, in the coming weeks. I, and I'm excited for, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, three month expectation that we're trying to set. And, uh, you know, if things change, I'll update the community. I think, if, if the community wants to know what my expectations are, I should be able to share it with you guys honestly. And then I should be able to share any updates, uh, you know, moving it forward or back. And I hope that there's a reasonable response to that. Uh, and and if, if we don't get that, then I'll stop sharing updates or I'll be doubling them and saying six months, but in reality, I actually believe it's three months. So um, I wanna be as transparent as possible. I think, uh, our community has a really, um, I, don't, I don't know, I mean, the, the level of toxic, just uh, the, the, our community is becoming a much more safe place to explore and to be and somewhere that I enjoy being. And I really have to give it to, uh, you know, all of you for offering that environment. The type of environment that we create will drive people away from us or towards us. And uh, we've made some incredible strides with that. Uh, in defining the MFT utility and how we want to position that, I, I explained a lot more detail today in this, you know, in this session. Um, I, I, I'm as optimistic as ever. And uh, I think that the, the opportunity in front of us is, um, one that's going to be very difficult to explain to my neighbors. And uh, those are some fun stories to share. So I, I look forward to what, what uh, the next 12 months holds for us. And, uh, and I'm excited to be 
very explicit on where we are innovating and very explicit on where we are not innovating. And in following the synthetics playbook, uh, I think we are pursuing a path that gives us the highest probability of success and sustainability. Um, all of which um, I, I think is gonna contribute to some, some really healthy growth for us. Uh, I hope you'll continue to support with us, engage with us on social media. And, uh, and, and so let me address these last, this last question and then we'll sign up. Are you guys hiring folks expert in finance that can support the protocol? It's a good question. I can tell you what my approach on hiring is. Is I try and find the, uh, the expert or the talent that I need in or outside of crypto. You t if you're gonna try and pull somebody from another crypto project, you're gonna pay a pretty steep premium. For some of the teams that I've recently added, I've chosen to make the trade off in uh, finding the best that exists and then bringing them in and allowing them bandwidth to learn and get up to speed on DeFi. Uh, I think working at mainframe is probably the coolest job that any of these people have because I give them a budget for experimenting with DeFi where they don't give a lick about the gas prices. And I tell them that they, in fact, need to be using the high gas prices because I don't want to wait for their learning. And uh, so we have weekly challenges where the team you know, goes and you know, uses, uh, for example, Wallet Connect in order to uh, buy or sell MFT from the Argent, uh, you know, wallet. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I think, so am I hiring anybody from finance? So I think in terms of hiring, what I want to say around this is my job is to build confidence. I sell confidence for a living as CEO of Mainframe. Every decision that I make, especially those decisions of material value to the protocol more broadly, pass through that filter is how is this going to add confidence to our users, to our community, to our MFT holders? And it, given two choices, I'm willing to spend the premium on what, whichever is going to drive the most amount of confidence. And I think that uh, Sometimes it's the financial individual who is new to crypto, uh, you know, taking this as an example. And sometimes it will be the crypto individual that needs to learn finance. And so, um, so th th that, that's the framework that I use to govern all material decisions uh, here at Mainframe. So Thank you all for joining me, and uh, I'm I'm really excited for this next chapter. I th I think I really think it's going to be unbelievable, and I hope that when you share with uh, you know those people uh, that respect you uh, the the journey that we're on, I hope they lose a little bit of respect for you because they just think you're just you're in some other world. It truly is a different world in DeFi right now, and uh, I'm excited to. Um, be experiencing it with uh, all of you in the community. We'll talk to you in the next one. Thanks.